So it's no surprise that the Louisville police are out of control. They don't care for truth. They don't care for justice. Um, just with my own um, my own interactions with them, uh, I've been here, you know, in Louisville for about four years. You know, been in Kentucky my whole, uh, mostly my whole life. I was born and raised here. And um, the uh, uh, with my own particular one, I just went for a walk to the store. That's all I did. For so it could happen to anybody for any apparent reason. I don't go out partying. I don't go out to bars. I don't drink. I just want to go to college get my study on, get a good job, and be productive in society. That's all I want to do. And uh, I wasn't looking for any trouble. I don't look for any issues. Just go to the store two blocks away. LMPD jumped me uh, in my own backyard. And at no part of the process was the truth or, you know, uh, any sort of justice, like, cared for. They didn't really want to know what happened. When I go to the internal investigations, they just covered it up. Go to the merit board, they just covered it up. And, again, at no point was, you know, truth or, or uh, any type of um, justice, you know, it was, that, that's not the point. The point is just to cover up any of their behavior. It doesn't matter if they do right or wrong. And, frankly, I think if you have a good, um, you know, a citizen's complaint authority board, it makes the cops better people. If, like, you know, a lot of times the cops get mad when you put, like, cameras on them. But when they have cameras, they tend to act right. You know, they have a camera on them. They ain't going to, you know, fuck around when they know that they could get arrested for the shit that they do. You can't just beat up people like the way that they're doing around here. Um, and you can't just kill people like they did to Rodney Abernathy. So with Rodney Abernathy, they do the same thing. They paid, um, they paid his family $600,000, over half a million dollars because they killed him. Um, but they just want to cover it up. They just want to cover up the whole thing and just kind of sweep it under the carpet. The grand jury never indicted him. The grand jury didn't decide, you know, there's not probable cause that the, a crime had actually occurred, even though there's a dead body. If there's a homicide. That's plenty of probable cause, you know, to indict somebody. There's a dead body. Somebody needs to be indicted. And then once there's indictment, then there's a jury trial. It's not even the end. You know, just because a grand jury indicted you, that just means a jury trial is going to be coming up. And so they didn't get indicted. There's no grand jury trial. And then they, uh, there's no jury trial. The grand jury never even convened. I, I don't even know if they convened. The prosecutor basically just, um, you know, just tells them what to think or what to say. And, uh, uh, but the, they asked the internal investigations how this case was turning out. And they said that they didn't want to comment on it because it was, um, you know, the, the investigation was still pending. Um, so they didn't want to comment on the grand jury's decision, but that's, that's just bullshit. The internal investigations, all they want to do is just cover up their buddy's crimes. They're not there to look for justice, and they don't want to be blackballed. You know, you don't want to be like Serpico. You don't want to be the only honest cop in a, you know, in an organization filled with a bunch of corrupt cops. So, you know, you go along, you go along with the flow, right? So... Um, Derek Leishman, he shoots this guy, you know, this uh, Rodney Abernathy about 20-something times, and they said they just kept on charging, and then finally, you know, the hero, Fred Helm, shoots him in the head, right, and then that finally stops the man from charging at him uh, after he already has two dozen bullets lodged into him. You know, and they said, oh, we had to, we had to. It was like, you had to? I mean, two dozen bullets? I don't know how, how big of a beast somebody has to be to be able to carry two dozen bullets inside of them and still keep on moving. And um, so uh, after hearing from 10 witnesses and listening to the taped statements of the four officers involved, the jury deliberated for about 40 minutes before returning their decisions of the six jurors. Two ruled Abernathy's death. This is the coroner, coroner's uh, inquest. So the six jurors, two ruled Abernathy's death as reckless homicide, two ruled it as suicide at the hands of the police, and one ruled it as second-degree manslaughter, uh, and one ruled it justifiable homicide. Uh, said Dr. Richard Greathouse, the coroner. So that's that's the coroners. There was six. There was a jury, you know, before the actual judicial system took place, and so it was just a you know a coroner's inquest. But of those six people, two of them said that it was reckless homicide. They just murdered him for no reason. The other one said it was suicide at the hands of the police, like he was uh, wanting them to shoot him. And then the other one said that it was second degree manslaughter, so that's murder, and then the other one says it was justifiable homicide, so that's it's saying it was murder, but it was justified. So out of the six of them, four of them said that it was murder, uh, two of them said that it was suicide, and of the four that said it was murder, three of them said that it was, you know, it was reckless homicide or second degree manslaughter, which are crimes which would send normal people to prison for many years.
but because they had a badge and because they have the uh, the majesty of law, uh, um, they they don't get any punishment at all. So, uh, given the findings, Abernathy's death would be listed as a homicide. Dr. Richard Greyhouse said the coroner added that the jury's varied opinions about the manner of death in Abernathy's case only demonstrates how troublesome the whole case is. Dr. Amy Burroughs, who performed the autopsy on Abernathy, said he was shot a total of 15 times. Although many of the wounds were superficial, she told the jury that with prompt medical attention, Rodney Abernathy could have been saved. Um, let's see. He said that they could have been saved with prompt attention uh, if it wasn't for the head shot. So is, they were saying that all the other injuries was just, I guess, arm shots and stuff, but the head shots wouldn't have just done them in. So Rodney Abernathy was not taking any medication. Uh, to prescribe uh, or that he was prescribed supposedly had schizophrenia so they you know they shot a, a mentally ill person. Um, Burroughs said that the toxicology test did not detect the presence of Prozac, Haldol, Trazodone, Risperidone, nor was any alcohol or legal drugs found in his blood. Now that's kind of, that's kind of a catch-22 because if those you know Prozac was found in the system would they have blamed the incident on the Prozac? So I think him having a clean system, you know, he was clean, he was unarmed, he had no gun, you know, and he got shot like over two dozen times. And it was at Chickasaw Park, you know, at four in the morning. So there's only, and it was, uh, it was, these are actually black police officers too. So these were, you know, it was in the middle of the dark, it was in the middle of nowhere, and now you got one dead body and supposedly no criminals. Fast forward uh, another year, January 7th, 1999, you got the case of Adrian Reynolds. In the case of Adrian Reynolds, he's arrested six days prior to the time he gets killed because of a domestic dispute. So he gets sent to the Louisville jail because, yeah, I don't know, maybe some alter altercation that he got into his wife. Uh, or it says he allegedly beat his girlfriend. So an aut autopsy performed showed that uh, Adrian Reynolds had died to blows to the head after a struggle with the correction officers in the jail's basement. When questioned, the five officers had stated that Adrian Reynolds fought with them after they intervened when he tried to commit suicide with a bed sheet. Okay, all of a sudden, this, all this just sounds like bullshit. So he's trying to kill himself with a bed sheet, and then all of a sudden he's getting in a fight with everybody. Like, okay. After learning of Adrian's death, the family members demanded that, he, that it be investigated as a homicide. Witnesses were questioned. One being an emergency medical technician saw the officer hit the inmate while on a gurney. Others reported that investigators seemed slow and biased in identifying and questioning witnesses. Uh, yet in one investigation, Jefferson County Coroner Richard Greathouse said that Reynolds' death, uh, Adrian Reynolds' death, was not the result of a suicide attempt. So again, the coroner seems to be the only honest man in the whole bunch of all this. Um, so the coroner's report uh, said that it wasn't the result of a suicide attempt. It was blunt trauma. Adrian Reynolds was beaten to death. He was beaten to, they, they stomped his head on the concrete floor is eventually what, what they're going to do. Uh, and they was beaten to death by correction officers. They find one scapegoat, but there's five guys that was all involved in this. And it, it's just like a, you know, it's a, it's a pack mentality. When motherfuckers get together, they just go along with the fucking flow, then, you know, then all of a sudden it's a bad thing, so they'll just pick one of the guys out to, to take the fall, and then the rest of them get to cover their own asses. Uh, so Timothy Barnes, Timothy Barnes is the one that they, that it fell on. He's the um, the one that got fired for it, and then he fights to keep his job. He actually turns around and sues the department for you know what they did. He, and he even said that he got uh, he got fired and he got all the bad publicity because he was white. So he like tried to re, you know reverse the race because it was it was five white guys beating up a black dude. And uh, uh, eventually, the family of Adrian Reynolds gets three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So you know they're not paying people if they think that there's absolutely no guilt at all. The, everything, every bit of acts, you know, all their actions to any of these cases is just to cover up their crimes. They don't give a shit about the truth. They don't care about justice. They don't care about what's fair and what's not fair. All they care about is they're right, everybody else is wrong. So we need to, you know, put out PR people out there. We need to limit our liability. We need to control messaging. You know, these are the type of words that they're using. And they're not saying what actually happened, what should happen, who's the bad guy, who's the good guy. Um, those questions aren't being asked. So, uh so yeah, it's just us in the hall, just us getting butt fucked by cracker jailers, bubble bucked the dumb fuck up Chuck because of white supremacist hate in 1998 in cell block six 
in the basement. Adrian Adrian Reynolds' face is smashed by the boot of Timothy. Bubba Buck, the dumb fuck up. Chuck Barnes, Bubba Buck, the dumb fuck up. Timothy Barnes wants to do some lynch tree harm. He oppressed and molest. And now Adrian Reynolds' two boys are fatherless. Just us. Timothy Barnes stomped and cracked Adrian Reynolds' head with his boot to the cold concrete basement floor until blood poured and he bled gore. Bled, bled, bled. Till Adrian Reynolds was fucking dead. One jury forced to retrial by turning the court proceeding into a kangaroo court. A dog and pony show. When his one vote, one corrupt bitch forced to retrial because of a hung jury. Timothy Barnes and his four LMPD, well I guess they're jailer buddies, get away scot-free. So they got away scot-free because of a hung jury. One motherfucker, one person, you know, was going to hold out. They're not going to go along with the other five jurors. They held out, and then that's why um, he got convicted, or he didn't get convicted. You know, it was a hung jury, so that means there is no decision. They'll have to do a whole other trial, and they have to go through the entire thing again. And uh, eventually, we don't hear about this case anymore. So I guess they went ahead and paid $350,000, and then and that was it. Um, he got fired, uh, but, you know, he didn't serve any jail time. Five people, you know, there's another murder, and none of the murderers go to jail. None of the murderers, only one of them was slightly punished, and the only way he was punished was because he lost his job. Typically, murderers don't just lose their job. They, they go to prison for a long time, or they're, you know, they're put into the, to the electric chair. And it's easy just to see if it's justice. All you got to do is just you know, reverse the roles. So if it was a police officer and there's five guys that jump a police officer and they're just beating the shit out of them and then one of them smashes his head on the concrete floor and then he's dead and then, you know, people just say that there's no crime, who gives a shit? Nah, that, that would be a crime that would be indicted and there'd be a whole trial and a big hoopla about. So the, that same year, a few months later, March, or May the 13th, 1999, you got Desmond Rudolph. Um, Desmond Rudolph, this shooting is going to turn um, Louisville just really into a, a madhouse because you got so many groups that's going to be protesting and you're going to have counter protests too. So uh, Desmond Rudolph, May 13th, 1999. Desmond Rudolph is a young black man. He's unarmed, uh, but he was shot 10 times. And so, you know, I don't know why anybody needs to shoot somebody that many times. Really, a kill shot is only takes one shot when you're shooting you know, ten times, two dozen times, you're you're having fun with it. You know, you're 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 getting off to killing. You're like excited about it. You know, you're like doing some Rambo shit, like die, die, and so you're you know you're just uh you've already killed the person, but you just want to like fuck up their face or something. So Desmond Rudolph, he shot ten times. He's in the alley, and it's for no no apparent reason. There's no they there's some just you know some reasons they give. But none of the explanations make any sense whatsoever for um, their behavior. So 18-year-old Desmond Rudolph is shot 22 times, uh, shot at 22 times by Louisville cops, get hit 10 times, and he's hit in the back. Uh, essentially, I guess the only one could, you know, one could just assume that just for being black, they're white cops shooting at a black young black man. Desmond Rudolph attempted to preserve himself by running in his own Chevrolet Blazer. So le before they had said that he was in a stolen vehicle, I read one report that said he was in a stolen, it wasn't stolen, it was his own vehicle. Okay, so, you know, m people might say, well, that's, that's enough reason he had a stolen vehicle. No, nah, it wasn't a stolen vehicle, it was his own car, his own Chevrolet Blazer. So he's, you know, he's about to get arrested or something, but he's running away from the police. And he, so he's not going towards them, he's running away from them. So they're not, there's no threat of any violence or any type of harm coming to the police. So he's running away. And um, uh, he's running away, he's going down in the alley, and then that's when they're shooting at him. Uh, and then he's, uh, four days later, he winds up dying. So Desmond Rudolph was murdered by Chris Horn and Paul Kincaid. So those are the police officers. Those are the murderers that are still on the streets, still running around unpunished. Chris Horn and Paul Kincaid. So Chris Horn, Pissin' Morgan, Paul Kincaid threw a dog parade of sin and hate, made a raid, murdered a child because they thought they was brave. That's why we got to invade the police state with, with a raid of AIDS. It's time to go spade, tase these cops back for what they did to the blacks like we're crazed. Like we ain't been phased. Dig a grave for the state and save the day and grave the pave with a day of rage. Gene Sherrard, the Nazi fascist cluxer retard, gave Chris Horn and Paul Kincaid exceptional valor awards. And Paul Rand's Ku Klux Klan feels empowered, so they deflowered Louisville. The Klan tower and the white people cowered. 
Let's see. The Klan town the white people cow got devoured. 1999 was like 1975 during Louisville's integration, the race war in Louisville City Nation. In 2007, we see integration's disintegration, the separation, the permanent resegregation. Louisville's the last to integrate and the first to resegregate.